Hello everyone and welcome to our fifth video in our Flask introduction series. This video is going to be on forums for our website as well as form templates. So the first thing we need to do is remember the first video where we installed some extensions. We installed I think like around nine or ten extensions for Flask. One of them was WT forms or Flask WTF. This is going to help us create our forms and does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. But before we can use it, we need to make a configuration file that configures some of the settings in it. To do this, you simply just make a file at the root of our project, which in our case is the Flask folder. So we're going to make a new file named config.py. This file is then going to hold all the configuration information for all of our applications and all of our extensions. So if you have any other extensions that you install later on in the future that need configuration, put them here. Now, for us, we're just going to put two little variables here. The first one is WTF CSRF enabled equals true. And the second one is secret key. Secret key, I recommend if you're going to actually be using this website in a production setting, make it a really long random series of characters. Do not just put a couple words in here or some simple password or even a complex password. Put something around like 80 random characters in here and you can find various things on Google that will do that for you. For our purpose, I'm just going to put secret key is secret. All right, very complex, no one will ever find it. All right, now the next part is explain what these do. The secret key is going to be used to create tokens for our users to verify that the same user is the one we're expecting. So it, you know, verifies users, which is an important thing. Specifically, the WTF CSRF enabled means that we're going to protect against cross-site request forgery vulnerabilities and attacks, which are a whole other video in itself. I'm sure Tom Scott um, probably has one. If you don't know who Tom Scott is, look him up on YouTube very amazing videos and I'm sure he's done one on that whole topic really well in depth. Essentially what this does is it makes a token in our forms that verifies that the user at the form that is posting is indeed the same person. It's coming from the same uh, browser and session from the original user. Once you have that, oops, yes sublime text, once you have that it's going to be very very simple for our next part. We're just going to actually configure our application. So we want to hop into app or the init.py file for our app. Once you get back into that file, we just need to put this little line here app.config.fromobject config. What this does here is it tells us that we want to create a config for our our application object, our Flask object, and we want to load it from some other object, in this case config. It'll look in the namespace of where we're running the server from and see config.py, and boom, it'll run through, add these to the configuration file for us, and then if any extension wants to use them, it's there for it. Once we have all this kind of configured, it's a lot of work, I know, we're going to actually hop into creating our actual form. To save some time, I've already done it for us, but we're going to create a file named forms.py underneath the app folder. Once you're in here, you want to import a few things. The first one is form. Now form as, ooh, form as you can see, is used here as the parent class of our login form class. This gives us all of the very like essential parts of being a form and really defines what a form is supposed to be. So this is going to be our parent class for any form class that we make. We need to make a form class for every form we make, which is going to be either a login form, commenting forms, uh, email settings forms, payment settings form, anything like that. You need to have some sort of class for it. And in our case, we're just making a login form and it's going to be a class named login form. But you need to import this so that you can actually have a real life form. The next thing is from WT forms, we want to import a few fields. Now these fields are actual real life fields that you will see face to face with you. String field is one that just has clear text. You type something in, that's what you see. 
password field is of course going to be that little black dot field where you start typing your password and you see the little black dots so someone can't just walk by and see what your password is in plain daylight. And boolean field, which we're actually going to define together, is going to be a little like checkbox for our field. In this case, we're going to use this for remembering the user. When you log into a form, I'm sure you've seen it plenty of times, it says remember me or remember user, stuff like that. That's what we're going to build with a boolean field. A boolean field is just simply a little checkbox. And then the third thing is from wtforms.validators, and we're going to import data required. This is a validator that will actually make sure that each one of our fields is not empty. This is a very, very important thing because if it's empty, we don't want to just waste power by checking if a user's like blank password is the correct password. No user should have a blank password. So you have to make sure that they're not trying to enter one in. This helps you also validate when people are creating users that the information is valid and we'll go over making custom validators later on. Now in our class, our login form, we're going to make a username field and a password field of the respective field type, string field and password field. Next comes the actual name that it's going to appear as in the form when we start processing data, username and password. And then we pass a list of validators. So you can have a lot of validators. You can validate like seven different times in this list with seven different validators, checking to make sure that everything is properly made, that they do indeed have data required fields filled with data, stuff like that. So you're just going to put whatever validator you want, such as data required inside this list to make sure that your users are giving you valid input and valid data. Now we're going to make one more field and this is going to be our Boolean remember me field. So we're going to say remember me equals Boolean field. And then in here, just a simple remember. And we're not going to specify, specify a validator for this. Instead, we're going to actually specify a default value of false. Now you see there, my IDE by default wanted to make it true. The reason we make this false is for a very, very specific, le or not legal, <laughs> safety reason. We want to make sure that if a user wants their session to be remembered on that web browser and that we make a cookie that does that, that we have them opt in and that we just don't do it by default. So making this false means that we're not going to automatically remember them and that they have to click the checkbox to make sure that we remember the user through that web browser. So after we have this whole little form done, the next thing we need to do is make a template for it. This is where some of the fun, creative stuff gets involved. We want to make a new template, so we're going to right click on our templates folder and make a new file. And this is just going to be simply called login.html. Now this is just going to extend our base HTML file. And then we're going to just define the block content just as we did in the last video where we actually talked about what a template was and how to use them. So now that we have that done inside this content, we want to put our actual form to find our form and all of its greatness. So first, of course, we want to have some header that explains what they're looking at. If they walked away from their computer because they're on dial up and then they come back and the page is loaded, they need to remember what they were on. So we're going to say sign in. And then we want to define the forum. By the way, all of this is just basic HTML. Uh, so far, we're not actually doing anything that requires knowledge of Python. So if you don't know what's going on, I recommend you go learn a little bit about HTML. It's very important and will help you out much further on in the future if you don't already know how to do this kind of thing. Next thing we want to do is form.hidden underscore tag. Now this is what gives us our CSRF token from the uh, WTF CSRF enabled setting that we made. You have to put this in every field, otherwise it will not work because it, it will check to see if they have a valid token. And because you didn't put this field here, they won't have a valid token. And it will just say, uh, screw off person trying to impersonate other person. This is not you. And they will never be able to post in a form, including logging into your website, which is something you want people to be able to do. Next, we're going to make a little paragraph tag here, and we're going to have a username, which is going to then be our form.username. 
and we're going to use this just as we would anything else. It's going to be a simple template that uses variables to specify where the fields go and do all the great stuff we want it to. Then I'm just going to put a little line break there, password, and we're going to do form.password here. And then after this, we want to make one more little field in a paragraph, and this is going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, the form dot remember me. Now, with that, I'll put a question mark there. We only need to make a submit button. Which is going to be input type oops, type equals submit and value we want to have say sign in. Now once you have all of that done right there, our template is done. Um, we simply just make our form by using our variables in our template, template formatting here so that we put our username field and our password field as defined by our forms class. And then we put our CSRF token up here along with remember me. Now the next thing comes from us actually rendering this page, which we haven't done since the last video. So if you forgot, we need to go into views.py. Now in views.py, we need to make a new method for login. So we're going to go down a little bit and we're going to define a new method called login for why not. And what we're going to do here is create a form of type uh, login form as we made. Now, after we do this, we need to quickly come up here and import from forms, import login form, just to make sure that we actually have that form and it can find it. Now, once we have our nice little form defined, we need to actually render the template with the form. So we're going to say return render template login HTML and then we're going to here put title equals sign in oops and then we're going to say form equals form form if I can spell properly now remember we also need to put some sort of decorator here to say where we're routing to so we're going to do an app dot route and then specify slash login. So if they go to slash login, it will take them to this page for us. Now, once you have all that done, we're just going to go back into our wonderful little uh, command prompt here and do python run dot pi. If you still have it running from the last video, that works too. And we're going to just go to localhost 5000 slash login. Remember to save your files. All right, cool. So if you remember to save your configuration, this is what you should see. We have our little navigation bar from our base file. And then in sign in, we have our username and password fields, our remember me button, and even a sign in button itself. And that's, that is it. We are done. Now there are a couple other things you can do that aren't exactly needed, but we're going to make sure we do them anyways just for conventional sake. So if we go back into our views.py, we want to say after this route methods equals and then make a list of the two different HTTP methods that we want to allow, which is going to be get and post. If we don't specify that, um, as we just saw when I hit sign in, it would freak out and say like, hey, you like aren't allowed to do that and it's because by default you're only allowed to use a git method so with this now you can play around it doesn't do anything because we haven't told it what to do with the user information but it's nice and pretty and you're on your way to becoming a flask master if you have any questions or comments or criticisms leave them in the comment section below if you like the video press the like button helps me out quite a bit and if you'd like to see any future videos press that subscribe button thank you and i will see you next time